so we've had our new 2015 Nissan Leaf for about a month now. Enough time certainly to get a feel for it, see how much we've been driving, see how much we've been charging, um, all of that. So I thought in today's video I want to kind of go over was it a good idea? Um, how much money have we spent? How much electricity have we used? And what would be the cost to upgrade the battery in this car? Now, since this is going to be a numbers episode, let's start off right off the bat with how much money did we spend on this car. So we bought this used, you know, sight unseen on Carvana for $16,000. We traded in our old Jeep with taxes and, you know, some extra, you know, additional cost. It was more like 17,000. Using Carvana for us was actually really great. We got the title and the license plates, like what, within a within a week or two in the mail, so everything was really efficient. Now, if you look at the market of EVs, I mean, new ones are definitely more money, you know, just like any car, obviously. A 2022 Nissan Leaf starts at 27,000. Tesla Model 3, 46,000. Rivian, 67,000. Tesla Model X, 114,000. So when you look at those numbers, spending $16,000 seems like a pretty good deal, especially when you think about the fact that what you're getting for that amount of money is not that different. You get a pretty reliable car that you, you know, drive using electricity and not gas. Fundamentally, they're not that different except for one thing, and that is range. So this 2015 Nissan Leaf has a 24 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, but in actuality, I would say it's more like an 18 kilowatt hour battery because they cap it, you don't get access to all of it, and then this is, you know, a couple of years old. And we get between 3.7 and 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour, depending on the conditions and how you're driving. We have 97%, 81 miles. Now, the thing when you are driving this car, first of all, just hear how you hear the road, obviously, but there's no engine sound which is kind of weird. That means that we have a range of about 70 to 84 miles. So in some ways that's kind of like buying a car with a three and a half gallon gas tank, um, which is a little funny and a little crazy at the same time. So we live in the country. It's about half an hour to drive into our kind of big stores and everything. We don't drive that much and we don't drive that far. But even when I go in now for this half an hour trip, um, if I go right there and right back, uh, I don't quite need to um, fill up. Um, but if I'm planning to drive around a little bit and do a couple of errands, or if there are more people in the car, then uh, I feel much better if I fill up, <laughs> to recharge the batteries. And there's a couple of different options in, in, in how you can do that. And luckily, nobody's there. <laughs> Um, and when I first saw this, I was like, oh great, this is pretty uh, convenient to where we usually go and there's two charging stations. Turns out one of them is broken, <laughs> but one of them works. There's also a couple of Tesla stations. I'm at 64%. I'm going to charge up and park and do a couple of errands. So the Leaf has two options for charging. The one port that has level one and level two charging, which is what you would do at home in a lot of charging stations out. And then it has the Chatmo charging, which is the quick charging. Now the Chatmo charger is getting phased out, which means that they're not making any more. So whatever exists now is <laughs> all there's going to be. So you can't really trust that there's going to be more of those in the future. So the only thing you can really rely upon, I think, is charging it at home. Now Chatmo, you can get up to like, what, 50 kilowatt hours? per hour, whereas level one is, I think it's one kilowatt hour per hour and level two is more like six. We get five and a half at home. Now we started with level one charging at home, which really meant that you took it out driving and you had to kind of wait till the next day to drive it again. Um, now we have level two charging, which I'm gonna go over in another video, but then it suddenly felt a lot more drivable because you could take it home and plug it in for like two hours and then be ready to go somewhere again. This charger right here is a level two charger. So since I'm at 63%, should uh, be pretty good when I come back in about an hour. Okay, bye bye little car. We haven't been to the gas station in six weeks because I hadn't gone two weeks you know, previously to getting the leaf and I've, we've only driven the truck like once. You know, as gas prices keep climbing like crazy, we haven't had to deal with that at all. When I've been driving around, 
most of the time there's nobody at these charging stations. However, that might change. You know, if it's always hard to find an available spot, uh, then it would be more frustrating. So far, it has really just been a positive experience. I can stop by these places. This is free charging right here. Of course, you don't know how long that's going to stay, <laughs> but hopefully there will be more charging stations pop up. Um, but all the stations that I have gone to, except for one, have been free. When you look at it from that point of view, it makes a lot of sense to be driving from the individual's point of view. If you're driving around a car and it's free to charge, I mean, how cool is that? Okay. So how much have we actually driven in this past month? About a thousand miles. Now that's a little more than we usually drive and the primary reason for that is because it's been so much fun and we, you know you feel like oh you can you know go to the park real you know real quick or go to the bookstore or you know like it doesn't matter um, because it feels like free it feels like a toy going driving it and now this may you know calm down a little bit but that's how much we've driven 1000 miles so how much have we spent on electricity we pay nine cents per kilowatt hour that's you know going to vary i think the the national average is 15 cents California average is 25 cents, so different prices. But we spend nine cents per kilowatt hour. So if you take a thousand miles, divide by let's say 3.7 um, miles per kilowatt hour, um, because that's our low range, that means that we have used 270 kilowatt hours. Times nine cents is $24. So we have driven a thousand miles for $24 in this past month. See, not flooring it. <laughs> if we had driven that much, a thousand miles, using the Jeep that we traded in at, you know, $4.50 per gallon, which is our current prices here, more or less, that would have cost $250. That's a pretty good deal. Now, of course, if you lived in California, on the other hand, uh, with those higher electricity prices, uh, you would have spent more like $67, which is still a lot better than California's gas prices are even higher. So, the, the, you know, the scale has just moved up a little bit there. If you are charging, if you're paying for charging on the road, it's obviously going to be more. Now, uh, depending on the charging, I try to be pretty quick and I try not to rely on it so that um, I don't take trips where I actually have to drive, you know, very far and I make sure I'm topped up more or less. We try not to charge the battery to like 100%, but, you know, usually go up to like 80, 90%. It was 95 now when I started. Now the Nissan Leaf is it's a small, light, rather aerodynamic car, so it gets good gas mileage. But let's look at another um, electric vehicle that is not quite as efficient. So Hummer has a new EV out. That one gets 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So if you kind of compare it to R4 against 1.6. So suddenly it would cost 625 kilowatt hours to drive those 1000 miles and that would cost $56 to charge up at home. So a little more than twice the cost. Um, and that of course is charging at home. That's not charging at a charging station out, you know, where the cost is usually like 50 cents per kilowatt hour, because then the cost would be more like $312 to charge up that EV Hummer, that same distance. If you compare it to driving our old Jeep, it would have been cheaper to take the Jeep the same distance that it would be to drive the electric Hummer. But of course, you know, me comparing the, the Nissan Leaf to the EV Hummer is kind of, you know, not really fair because they're completely different vehicles. I mean, the Hummer has a much, much larger engine. It actually has three engines that offer 746 kilowatts of power. That's a thousand horsepower. Uh, now, the Nissan Leafs, uh, in contrast, offers 80 kilowatt hours, <laughs> 107 horsepower, so pretty much like one tenth. Um, so they're not the same car, obviously. Um, and I don't think anybody would buy the Hummer because of efficiency. That's not the reason why you would buy it. But not all EVs are the same. And some of them actually cost a fair amount to operate. Um, of course, if you compared it to a gas-driven Hummer, I mean... <laughs> It's funny, yes, I've been driving around, um, kind of in the countryside a bit, um, 
there's no EVs around. Uh, even, you know, in town here, it's so rare to come across any. And I mean, I guess that makes sense if you look at the statistics. And the statistics basically tell us that almost half of all the EVs are in California, and most other states have rather low numbers. Of course, in Europe and China, the percentages are much higher. It's like once you're in this game, I think it's hard to look back, unless it just becomes completely impractical for whatever reason. But it's kind of funny, like, I don't see why I would ever get a gas car again. <laughs> I bet I'm using quite a lot of electricity right now. Now, one reason why I wanted to get the Nissan Leaf specifically is because it is not a new car. It has a track record. Other than the battery going down over time, there's not a whole lot of wear and tear on the rest of the car. Of course, this is true for a, a, most EVs. You know, you don't have a transmission. You don't have, you know, issues going wrong with major systems that can be really expensive to repair over time. I mean, obviously the AC could break or parts like this, but major and large repairs over time is very rare. And I would really bet on the fact that if, other than the battery going down slightly over time, um, I think we could drive this car for a long time. And if you were to upgrade the battery, which is certainly a possibility, then who knows how long, uh, you know, we'll be able to drive this one rather comfortably. So what if you did want to upgrade your battery? Well, you can't go through a Nissan dealership because they only do like warranty replacements and things like that. They won't make any upgrades you have to go through a third party. So I started looking around and I'm in Virginia. Um, it turns out <laughs> if I wanted to uh, you know, do this, the closest shops to me are in Georgia and Boston or Massachusetts. So I talked on the phone with some of these guys and they're really nice, very friendly. There seems to be a big demand for this. One of the guys told me that I was the 10th person today who called and inquired about this. Um, and the other guy said that he had a wait list of 160 people. So definitely like a lot of you know people who are looking to upgrade their batteries. But what does it cost then? Okay, so I have a 24 kilowatt hour battery. If I wanted to upgrade to a 40 kilowatt hour battery, the cost is going to be between nine and 14,000, uh, depending on the quality of the battery. Um, and if I wanted to upgrade to a 62 kilowatt hour battery, um, the cost would be between 12 and $18,000. Now these batteries are not new. They are uh, like recycled batteries that they buy at auction. Most of them have been in accidents. However, the battery is positioned in the uh, bottom of the car. So even in crashes, apparently the battery is usually still in good condition. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Obviously, it's not cheap to upgrade one of these batteries. That begs the question, could you do this yourself at home? Could you buy an old battery at auction and replace your old one? Well, some people, like this guy, he did it. Another option you can do is to replace the individually damaged cell pouches in your current battery. Um, these are standard flat lithium ion pouches. Uh, you do have to make sure the chemistry is right and the voltage has to be the same, but it's certainly doable and kind of cool. There is a company in New Zealand that is working on a new battery uh, for the Nissan Leaf that may or may not come out this year or next year that apparently was going to be more affordable. Of course, that's just all talk, but you never know. I'm sure there are things in the works. So the company working on this is called EV Enhanced. And one thing that's super interesting about the battery they're producing is it has active cooling, uh, which the current Leaf batteries do not. That means if you were to upgrade when these became available, you could actually take your Leaf out driving on a road trip and charge repeatedly without overheating and damaging the battery. I mean that's what kind of fun and interesting about this whole area that it is like there's so much energy in it you know people are working on things uh, new companies are coming out new cars are coming out and new batteries are coming out as well. Uh, so I'm sure that in a little while there'll be more more stuff coming. After driving this for a month now we still have our gas truck and I would love to trade that in for an electric truck. Uh, that might not be possible right now, but in the future that's what I would really like. Now the, the reason why we kind of need two cars is because while the Leaf is really great and it's great for short trips, um, in the rare occasion that you need to take a longer trip it's not great for that. Then of course a truck is nice when you do woodworking and you need to haul things around and you want to pick up supplies and stuff like that, so it's really useful for us to have a truck. But then when you think about it too, like how economical are really the larger ones? I mean that's going to depend in the future like what our gas price is going to be. What if they drop 
a lot. What if gas prices in a little while go go down? You know, unlikely, but what if they do? Then the prices to drive like one of these big, heavy EVs may not seem like such a good deal. Like it may be very similar to the gas. So it all kind of depends on the electricity prices going forward, the gas prices going forward. Um, but apart from that, driving uh, an EV, I didn't realize this beforehand, but I love the way it feels when you're driving it. The sound level is so low. You're not, you know, putting out any, any gas, any emissions, anything like that. It feels really clean. And, and the acceleration and the way the whole thing works is really fun. Plus the kind of number scheme of realizing, okay, we're at this level, how many percent should we go charging? You know, some people may be bothered by that, but I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, so it's kind of added another dimension to driving um, that I've never had before. And it, I just love it. I think it's the best. So considering that uh, we have spent $24 this past month on driving, uh, a, f a considerable amount of driving, we usually don't drive that much. Whereas if we had paid for gas, that would have been a couple hundred dollars. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Now, let me know in the comments if you would consider buying an EV. Would you consider buying a used EV? Or maybe you already have. And if so, why or why not? I would love to hear that in the comments below. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Um, and I'll see you soon. Bye.